Once again, Magic the Gathering has experienced another leak, this time for the upcoming Innistrad Midnight Hunt set. Specifically, the card that's been leaked is from one of the upcoming Midnight Innistrad Hunt Commander decks, and it gives us an interesting view into how the plane of Innistrad has changed since the last time we were there. Magic. I am a wizard. History. The Magic Historian. My bones hurt. Greetings, owners of fine luxury cardboard rectangles. My friends, we are gathered here today to do one of my favorite things, which is to talk about brand new magic cards. And on top of that, we have the extra spice added on that this is something we're not supposed to see yet. Ooh, the forbidden, let me take a peek. That's how it feels, you know what I mean? It's just fun to get access to something before we're supposed to, and I'll be real, man. When it comes to magic, I'm totally one of those hype beasts who's like, more, 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 keep giving me new cards, show me new cards every day of my life and I won't complain. I know some people get kind of burn out on it all, but dude, I love seeing new magic cards and evaluating the possibilities because every single magic card can be a story all on its own. And this spoiler card comes with its own additional story, the story of how it actually got leaked. And it's basically a production error. So what happened is Wizards of the Coast has recently changed how they're doing commander decks, right? And so the idea now is that they will include, along with your commander deck, a rugged, thicker version of the actual face commander card from the deck so that you can go, boom, here's my big commander kind of card without actually using the real card itself if you don't want to. It's just a neat little extra include. But in this case, what happened was somebody bought an Adventures in the Forgotten Realms commander deck, and instead of getting the face card for their deck, this was included. Now, I know there are some people who, whenever something like this happened, goes, it was on purpose. Wizards did it. They're diabolical. And it's like, dude, let's be real. Look at, the, look at the card quality recently. Wizards of the Coast makes a fair number of errors. So I don't really think that they're going out of their way to like seed these commander decks with the wrong cards. I think it's genuinely an accident because... By putting, if they did this intentionally, it wouldn't allow them to control the flow of spoiler season. And Wizards of the Coast likes controlling the flow of spoiler season very much, right? Look at what they're doing with the upcoming, if you haven't heard about it, there's going to be 31 digital only arena cards that are being created with the new Jumpstart Historic Horizons. Have you heard about that? If you haven't, I'll leave a link to it at the end of this video because that, if that information also got act accidentally leaked maybe they released it early but i i think they probably just messed up anyhow if you want to know more about that watch the video at the end the point i'm trying to make is even with those digital only arena cards they're creating a mini spoiler season so i think that this was genuinely an accident and wasn't meant to be included in the deck right now all of that aside let us actually take a look at what the card is so i guess before we cover that just so you know there are two innistrad sets coming at the end of the year so it's so you know which one this is this is part of the set that gets released in september because wizards of the coast is trying a new experiment where instead of just having normally they would just have one set at the end of the year for standard so it would have just been one innistrad set but they're breaking it down into like a vampire one and a werewolf one. So we're doing Midnight Hunt first. And then in a couple months, we'll get Crimson Vow before the end of the year. So this will be part of the first Innistrad set, specifically with the Commander decks. And you can actually tell that by what's printed down here. It says <laughs> M-I-C. It's my. It's like me. It's Mike. All right. Basically, if you look at this code, you can tell it's Midnight Hunt. Adventures in the Forgotten Realms code for the regular cards is AFR, and their code for the Commander decks is AFC. So I'm guessing that the normal set like name on the Magic cards will be MID for Midnight Hunt, although it could be something else, and MIC for Commander. And 001, and the fact that this is one of those thicker cardboard variations, means that this is going to be the face Commander for one of the commander decks. So this is Lenore, the Autumn Sovereign. She is one white, one green, and two for a zero four legendary human noble. And you can see that the expansion symbol, it kind of 
it kind of looks like a shield. It kind of looks like a heart. I don't know. Whenever they make the commander decks, they do a variation of the expansion symbol. So I'm not sure 100% what the expansion symbol is going to be looking like. Anyways, that's not a big deal. Let's take a look at the ability of the card itself. Coven. At the beginning of combat on your turn, put a plus one, plus one counter on up to one target creature you control. Then if you control three or more creatures with different powers, draw a card. This is a very odd and honestly, at first, kind of underwhelming feeling ability, right? Like, basically, you're paying four mana for a zero four, and you get one plus one plus one counter a turn. That's it. And then you layer on the fact that if you have three or more creatures with different powers, you get to draw a card. Now, that's actually not a very hard hoop to jump through. It's not very difficult to get three creatures of different power out in the first place, but since you have the ability to add plus one, plus one counters, you can clearly manipulate your creatures into whatever power level you want. And Lenore being a zero four, in this case, actually is a little more beneficial just from the perspective of making it easier to meet the conditions. Now, ultimately, to me, this feels like an underwhelming level commander overall, just based on the power level of commander. In a, in a, in a bubble, like in a vacuum, where you're just playing this maybe against other commander decks from Innistrad, then yeah, you know, it's, it's probably an all right power level, because we're dealing with the situation like we did with the zendikar decks that's actually with zendikar rising commander decks that's where i got into buying a commander deck and basically changing it around because my commander deck is built around hazes on tamar and so as a building block for it i literally just bought the oban white red green precon from zendikar and used that to base my deck around now, obviously it doesn't mesh perfectly but i did notice I tried the deck before, like, adding Hazes on into it, and Oban feels like that, that deck and the uh, specifically that commander felt pretty underwhelming. So I believe that they make sort of power level down commanders for a lot of these commander decks, more ones that are meant to be built around rather than bust through the door. The bust through the door, everybody pay attention to me, commanders, are the ones that they put into the booster packs because they want you to chase them. Now, I'm not trying to knock this card and say that it's a bad card because it's not. But ultimately, four mana for a zero four that the first turn you put it out, the, mo the literally the most amount of impact this can have on the game when you cast it, like the most impact it can have, is increasing one of your creatures by one one and you drawing a card. That's it. That's the most she's going to do. Sure, if you have other ways to boost the number of plus one, plus one counters, then yes, that will add additional power to it. But ultimately, this feels like an underwhelming card to use if you're playing like higher level commander. I like the card conceptually though. You know what I mean? Like honestly, I would throw this into my cube. The card draw and the slot, like it does have a nice inevitable nature to it. I do like things that progressively beef up over turns where it's like, if you don't have an answer to me, I will become a genuine problem. And after playing against that one card that's in standard right now, the Luminarch, who's basically like, you get to put a plus one, plus one counter on your creatures every turn. I see how quickly that can ramp up and get out of control, but this does cost four. We are talking about Commander, which has a lot more answers, so this feels slower overall, but that's all right. This is still a very cool card, and like I said, it gives us an interesting window into the current state of the world of Innistrad, depending on how much you're willing to read into cards and use them as a window to view the world. And obviously, if you are a regular viewer of my channel, you know that I very much enjoy taking cards and figuring out the story behind it and seeing what it adds to the world overall. And so Lenore Autumn Sovereign, from that perspective, is genuinely fascinating to me. So, the flavor text on Lenore says, she keeps the festival's revels from faltering, infusing the witch's rituals with hope. So if it wasn't obvious to you already, this is a witch. I mean, it, it seemed pretty clear to me. Look at the artwork. She's definitely got a witchy kind of vibe, right? She's got the, she's got the, the raiments, the vestments, the clothing that has that kind of 
witchy feel to it. She even has a particular headdress now. Clearly, with the version we're looking at here, this isn't a high-resolution piece of artwork that we got from Wizards of the Coast. This is literally a picture taken by somebody who got the card. And, as is the case with most leaks of this nature, the picture is somewhat grainy and the details aren't all easy to pick out. But, it appears that this artwork is set in an autumnal setting it makes sense it looks like it's autumn in the evening the reason i say that is if you look in the background you can see what looks like a number of tree branches and they all look bare and also there's the fact that you have the cheat sheet of her name the autumn sovereign right so thinking that it's autumn makes perfect sense but it looks like as well if you look on her back there i don't know if they're trying to give it like a, a growing wings coming out of her back kind of feel because of the graininess of the artwork but it does look like a bunch of autumnal leaves that are kind of like attached to her back and actually now that i look at it down more along the bottom of her dress but the headdress she's wearing has a feeling of antlers which connects it to nature it looks like it's made out of a bunch of branches and some autumn leaves on her head as well and it does kind of evoke what is the name of that Disney Malif Maleficent? There we go. Maleficent, the evil queen from, uh, it's not, is that Snow White? Is she eating the apple? Uh, either way, whatever. She looks like, she looks like the Disney witch from the cartoons, okay? I'm not, I'm not up enough on that stuff, apparently, as my brain's like processing, processing. Anyways. She definitely has the vibe of a witch. She's got this kind of like gesture going on like they're in the middle of uh, like she's in the middle of some kind of ritual. And there are all these candles floating about, which I really like. You can see parts of her clothing have lifted up almost as if the candles are sentient beings in service of her floating around her almost akin to will-o'-wisps. If you were far enough away from her and were viewing this out in the forest, you would probably see the glowing lights at first and be like, are those will-o'-wisps? Are those the spirits of the lost? And then one of two things would happen. You would either flee, be like, yo, I'm getting out of here. I don't even want to know what's going on. Or as you came closer, you would realize that this is a witch engaged in some sort of ritual. So we have the interesting scenario of having a white green witch. This is not the norm. Most of the time in Magic the Gathering, witches are black aligned and they're aligned with like rot and fester. Like I'm going to make putrid potions that will destroy you. It's all about like decay and evil magic and witches hexes and things like that, right? Think about Throne of Eldraine. Throne of Eldraine had a heavy evil witch theme. In fact, if you didn't know it, the Kenrith twins were actually born from a witch. And then King Kenrith stuck a sword in her head and threw her down a well. So <laughs> there was some wild witch stuff going on in that set. But the idea of a white, green, a white green witch is a very interesting concept. And when you combine that with the flavor text, it says she keeps the festival's revels from faltering, infusing the witch's rituals with hope. That idea of infusing witch rituals with hope is not normal. You would think they would be filled with despair and other negative emotions because of our previous combinations with witches, right? So what might be going on here is the world of Innistrad basically faced massive upheaval in their faith structure. They believed in Avicen and the Church of Avicen to watch over them and protect them. It used to be mankind needed to be protected by Avicen from the vampires and the werewolves. But then Avicen ended up trapped inside the Hell Vault and was gone for a while. And then Avicen ended up corrupted and Soren had to completely obliterate Avicen and the Church of Avicen fell apart. We saw all the details of that happening in the story. So Innistrad is a world that has lost its basic leadership figureheads, right? And as a result, there's a vacuum created there. And this looks like what's happened is they may have switched to a sort of almost primitive worshiping the seasons aligned with nature and witches sort of variation, right? I don't know exactly how it's going to pan out, but it could be a world where there are literally four different sovereigns, one for each season, and basically like 
you have these different festivals that happen at the equinoxes, right? So like the like the real world the druids and stuff like that that used to go out and worship in the woods at particular times of the year. That could be the new type of leadership structure and overall religion organization that Innistrad has fallen under with no one else to look to. Now humans have needed to step in and take the roles of leaders and the ones who are doing so are these witches representing the different seasons, representing the cycle of death and life and rebirth, but done from a like a hopeful perspective, right? Because this is the autumn one. So if they were really doing it from a negative perspective, autumn is where you're moving into you're moving into death, right? Spring would be birth, winter would be death. So autumn would be facing the twilight of your life and focusing on moving into that era of it. Now, obviously, I'm extrapolating a fair bit from the flavor of this one card. But to me, it's fascinating to see the way that the belief structure on Innistrad has changed and how, as a result, you could have a coven of witches coming together. And it would be very interesting if there was four, because normally witches' covens work off the magic number of three, right? Three is a number of power. So if Innistrad had a different setup and four was the number of power there, that would be a cool concept to me. But anyways, I just wanted to share my thoughts on the uh, on the situation. So you let me know what you think of the card overall and what it could mean for the theories of the belief structure of Innistrad or if there's other details that you've picked up that I've missed out on because I'm definitely curious to hear them. Thank you to all my patrons for supporting my channel and I will see you all my friends next time.